All right, all right, all right. We are back with the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Here to talk about everything in terms of professional wrestling, all the action inside and, excuse me, outside the ring. Also, uh, you know, superstar news, updates, rumors, uh, contract statuses, injuries. We talk, we talk about it here on the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast. So I'll just kind of reflect on what we talked about real quick. We had our WWE SmackDown review. Then we had our WWE Monday Night Raw preview. We talked about the men's top 10 power rankings of the week. And now we're going to talk about my top 10 women's wrestling power rankings of the week, which is, uh, you know, which is pretty awesome. Obviously, in the chat, if I miss something, obviously, uh, you know, be like, hey, Eric, what the hell, man? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing, dog? What are you doing? At number 10, I got Willow Nightingale. Willow Nightingale is still very much damn near one of the best wrestlers in terms of the women's division on AEW, New Japan Professional Wrestling, the CMLL. And um, there's one more. I can't think of it right now. Oh, my God, Ring of Honor. Uh, so, uh, you know, obviously the the women's CML World, Heavy Champ- World Heavyweight Champion has a match with Chris Statlander. Heading toward AEW All In at Wembley Stadium, London, and it's going to be great. It's going to be one hell of a match. You're going to have that, that 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 monster, that guy that people hate so much. You're going to have Stokely there. Oh, Stokely! No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but thousand and ten percent. I loved how Willow Nightingale represented the AEW Women's Division before they kind of signed Mercedes Monet. When she came back from that foot injury, you know, kind of did a little Nani get a little dirty there. Obviously, you know, I knew, you know, she, you know, backstage in terms of her interviews and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, she's, you know, she's told wrestling reporters before, like, she's just happy that she has a place in AEW. She's humble as pie. She's cool as shit, cool as stuff. And, like, then you have Mercedes money. You're like, Willow, sorry. You can't have this girl that's a lot of high, a lot of more high maintenance than you are, you know, uh, you're going to drop the title to her in the first title defense. But I was like, you know what? That's cool. Like, oh, you know, it's, it's fine. And then she goes out there and she wins the CMLL World Heavyweight Championship, which she will not lose. She should not lose against Chris Stanley because if she does, I will cry me a river. I will cry me a river. Oh, cry me a river. I don't know. Justin Timberlake back in like 2000, early 2000s, I think it was. But all right, anyways. Uh, moving on to number nine, I got Athena, the Ring of Honor World Women's Heavyweight Champion, still running on that long reign, still being historic AF. But um, I don't know. I You can't really say too much about Athena because she's just so damn impressive. She's so damn successful. She wins. All she does is win, 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 no matter what. And she does. And she does a great job. And she hits on the promos. A thousand ten percent. You cannot hate this girl. Although you every single like you want so bad. Like I was kind of well, I, I was a huge fan of Ember Moon in WWE NXT when she was with WWE. So I was uh, you know, subconsciously I'm kind of rooting for her. But when she had her match at Ring of Honor Death Before Dishonor against Queen Aminata, I was like, you know what? I think the Queen's gonna do it. I think she's gonna do it. And then she did not do it. And I was like, damn. That's what happens when we bet against Athena, the Ring of Honor, the longest reigning Ring of Honor Women's Champion, one of the longest reigning champions in business history. Just imagine if she hits like a thousand or something days, bigger than Roman, bigger than Bob Backlund, bigger than Bruno San Martino, bigger than Hulkamania. That would be crazy. That's kind of cool, though. That'd be kind of great. I feel like that would overall benefit the company herself. And also just wrestling fans all over the world. So definitely love that. At number eight, I got Mariah May. Mariah May, is she the new generation of AEW women's wrestling? Can she defeat timeless Tony Storm at AEW All In? It's possible. It's possible. But without help, I definitely think Mina Shirakawa is kind of hinting at, you know, you know, kind of coming aboard to the Mariah May bandwagon board train. Oh, Lord, we're going to have tickets, we got tickets, who has our tickets? And Mina Shirakawa was like, oh, I have my ticket. We're going to take down Tony Storm. And Mina Shirakawa, during her promo on AEW Dynamite last Wednesday, she was like, oh, I'm just so scared. What are these two girls? I just respect them so much. Like, it was just so, 
just seems so fake. It was like, dude, I can see right through you. <laughs> just kidding. No, but like, who gets worked up over like Amina Shirakawa promo? I do. I'm just kidding. No, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's just cool. It's just kind of, you know, it's a little wonky. But me, I'm a wonky ass guy. So I'm like, you know what? I buy it. I dig it. I'm a wrestling fan. You could probably tell me the sky is not blue. And I'd be like, no way, dude. And someone's like, gives me a compelling storyline. It's like, you know what? The sky was blue. But then, you know, yada, yada, yada. Then it turned yellow. And I'd be like, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. I'm not a flat earth thinker here. I'm not a Kyrie Irving here. I'm just kidding. Kyrie Irving, if you're listening to this podcast, I am completely sorry. I'm just kidding. No, but uh, I don't know. Moving on. Uh, so we have mean. So we have Mariah May at number eight. And number seven, I got Tiffany Stratton during SmackDown. You saw her throw a celebration for her bestie, Nia Jax, the new WWE Women's Champion. And she did not back down. She did not kneel down. I was like, you know what? I appreciate all this, Tiffy, but I need you to bow down to me. I need you to bow down to me. And Tiffany Stratton was like, oh, okay, yeah, but we got pretty family. Like, you know, like, and then, like, then they were doing their thing. And I liked the promo. I thought it was a thousand and ten percent. You can tell that the fans were kind of not wanting to, for Tiffany Stratton to kind of kneel down. Maybe perhaps it's going to be like the lesser of two evils kind of match heading toward here. But overall, what happened on Friday Night SmackDown at the celebration, I know for a fact that Tiffany Stratton will cash in her money in the bank on Nia Jax. I I don't know. I, I feel like WWE kind of owes Nia Jax a little bit of a run here. You know, it's you know, I don't think she's had a title run longer than even when she was the tag team champion with Shayna Baszler. I I I think they owe her a little longer of a title run than like five or six months. So that brings us to, um, you know, this brings us to what happened in December, maybe Elimination Chamber. Maybe something happens and stuff like that. But I don't know. I just like the promo. I thought it was pretty cool. We have to finish track. All right. At number six, we got Mercedes Monet. Mercedes Monet has been, you know, in lack of a better term, kind of diminishing in terms of value you know i used to like mercedes monet on her own recently since she got her muscle and camille it's just not the same anymore you know it, you know when you're a heel and you get yourself in like tight situations the fans love that and the fact that you kind of have this bodyguard to kick everyone's ass at will you know it doesn't really make it that fun but when you had uh you know sasha banks get you know surprise attacked by Britt baker uh dmd and then, you know, Sasha Banks finds a way to get out of it or she finds a way to manipulate uh, the promo to when she comes out on top. And, like, we don't really get that with Camille. Like, I, I understand why you added Camille, Tony Khan, but I don't know. I just feel like Mercedes Monet to be a full heel, you know. I But then again, me as a wrestling fan, I could be going on completely one way at the spectrum and the other one, you know, because there's a lot of heels back then that had this kind of, you know, strapping person to kind of defend them. Like, you know, Big Daddy Cool Diesel with Shawn Michaels when Shawn Michaels was so ecstatic. He was like, you're my bodyguard. You know, so at Triple H during Evolution, you had Batista. And then like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's worked in the past. But right now, I do not know why, uh, you know, maybe it's me being a little more skeptical in terms of watching Mercedes Monet because, you know, ever since she left, she left WWE, a lot of people have a magnifying glass on her. A lot of people think that leaving WWE was a mistake by Mercedes Monet. But then Tony Khan, as soon as Monet debuted in the AEW, she won the championship right away. Now she's a New Japan uh, strong women's champion. She's a double champion, something that you never really, you know, I, I haven't seen that on AEW. You know, so I don't know. Kind of, you know, stroking the ego a little bit. Maybe perhaps they can find a way to kind of better you know, kind of better suit this, especially with the promos. You know, I don't want to keep seeing somebody get their ass kicked, you know, heading up to, you know, one of the the biggest, the biggest AEW pay-per-view, PLE. Uh, well, it's not PLE, it's pay-per-view. They still charge us 50 bucks. Damn it. I'm just kidding. No. Uh, BleacherReport.com, I think you can buy it also on YouTube. So you can, you know, check it on that. But Mercedes Money, I have. At number six, got to go rapid fire here. Running out of time, Rhea Ripley at number five. I had her a little bit high for the past couple of weeks, but um, I got to be honest. I hate, absolutely dread this mixed tag team match. 
at Bash of Berlin. You know, one of two things. One, I, I, I just don't think it's good. I don't think it does anything in terms of, uh, you know, furthering this plot. And second of all, once again, WWE shows that once when they kind of go overseas, once when they kind of have these PLEs like Clash of the Castle, like, you know, Jetta Saudi Arabia, this and that and the other, like, you know, you kind of, you don't get as much as you thought, as, as, as you want. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I don't know. I've had a lot of skepticism kind of moving forward, but, um, you know, I'm open to it. At number three, uh, at number four, I got Nia Jax. Nia Jax, the queen of the ring, also the WWE Women's Undisputed Champions going to kick total ass heading forward. At number three, I got Kaylani Jordan, the NXT Women's North American Champion. Honestly, I've, I I think she's great. I think she's great a thousand ten percent. She's gonna probably fight Wendy Chu at No Mercy October. No, no, no. September fifth? No. Damn it. September first. No, I don't know. Uh, I will definitely double check that for you guys. But at number three, I got Kaylani Jordan. At number two, I got the NXT World Heavyweight Champion Roxanne Perez, still kicking ass on NXT, the two-time NXT Women's Champion is still causing some demolition. At number one, of course, we have the AEW World Women's Heavyweight Champion, Timeless, Tony Storm. There's not much I can say about Tony Storm except that she's amazing, except that she's awesome. She's represented the AEW brand. Then, you know, pretty great, pretty great. What else do you, who else do you have on the main women's division in terms of, you know, AEW, you know, recently they did have this uh, partnership with New Japan Professional Wrestling, the CMLO, also Ring of Honor. So, you know, there could possibly be somebody bigger and better than Tony Storm. Obviously, Mariah May is, uh, you know, in that category, looking to take the crown of the AEW princess from Timeless Tony Storm. But hey, only time will tell. Only time will tell. All right, guys, we are rapidly running out of time here. I still got one more segment for you guys we have my memorial monday we're going to talk about afa anoi obviously one of the members from the samoan dynasty the only family maya vea is also the fatus did pass away august 6 17th 17th at the age of 81 so we're going to respect his life we're going to talk about it and uh yeah so make sure you do not press that dial do not go anywhere because we're about to uh you know get into respect mode and talk about this amazing superstar there is off you know so hey do not go anywhere <laughs> 